Let's begin with a simple MPI example, the Hello World program. An example C program can be found at the following address. Save this code as wiki.mpi.c. For these examples, I will use the new A Star Supercomputer. If I list the files that I have in my current repository, we can see that I have already downloaded the wiki MPI example. So if I do a nano or vi to look at the code itself, we can see that this is a basic Hello World program using MPI. I won't go into the details of how this works. You can do that on your own or have a look at the Introduction to MPI webinar on the LMS. The next step would be to create an sbatch script. Since the C program needs to be compiled before MPI can be run, we can either compile the program in advance, which would be better, or just compile it as part of the sbatch script. For simplicity, let's just do it all in the queue. So here's our script. We will call the job test MPI. We will output the standard output and error into a file called resmpi.txt. We'll request four CPUs, possibly on four different machines, for 10 minutes using 100 meg per CPU. For the program to run, we actually need to load a few modules, so GCC and OpenMPI in this case. Then we compile the C program and launch its output program. So now let's just run this on a star. As you can see, I have the exact same batch script that we just looked at. I can submit this to the queue using sbatch. So if I look at the queue, you can see that my job is currently running because this is a fairly tiny task. It didn't go into the pending jobs for too long and it has finished. So now if I look at the output of resmpi.txt, we should see the four different processes that were run by MPI. Next, let's try an OpenMP example. In this case, the job will be run in an allocation where four cores have been reserved on the same compute node. Here again, you can download the C program at the following address. So the next few steps will be similar to our previous example. Here again, we define the job name, in this case, test OMP, the output file, which will be resomp.txt. We will request one node with n tasks equal one, where we want 16 CPUs per tasks with a runtime of 10 minutes. The number of uh, memory per CPU will be 100 megabyte. And finally, we will compile the program and execute it. Back on a star, uh, I've made a repository for OpenMP here again. Um, and so if we look at the C code, it will be uh, what we've downloaded from Wikipedia. So, so as we can see, this is a very simple OpenMP program where we first load the OpenMP.h file and then simply print Hello World with that process. Here again, I have the same as batch that we've described in the previous slide. And so if I send that to the queue, here again, we can see that my uh, program is running, which wouldn't take very long to run. And now I can see my compiled OpenMP program, which is hello OMP and the output file. And so now if I actually look at uh, the output file, we can see the 16 Hello World that have been uh, outputted from 16 different processes on one CPU. So next up are the embarrassingly parallel problems. We call a problem embarrassingly parallel if little or no effort is needed to separate the problem into a number of parallel tasks. So for instance, this is the case for problems based on random draws, such as Monte Carlo simulations. In such cases, you can have four programs drawing a thousand random samples and combining their output afterwards. This would be the equivalent of drawing 4,000 samples, but in four different programs run in parallel. Another typical example is a parameter sweep. 
In this case, the same task is computed several times, with the only difference in the initial value of some high-level parameter at each run. An example of parameter sweep could be when we are looking for an optimal integer value by exploring a certain range. This parameter sweep can be achieved with Slurm by using the array option, going, for example, here from 1 to 8. Then, by calling our program using srun and using the Slurm array task ID variable, we can then explore our parameter space. In this configuration, the command myprogram will be run eight times, creating eight distinct jobs, each time with a different argument passed by the environment variable defined by Slurm array task ID ranging from 1 to 8. Our last example will be a pack job. The following job submission script will ask Slurm for eight CPUs and then will run the program using variables from 1 to 1000. The thing to note here is the end sign at the end of the srun command. This means that each program will run on a specific process. Using the n1 exclusive option, the job will ensure that only 8 instances are running at any point in time, each being allocated one CPU. Now that we have covered most user commands, the different types of parallel jobs, along with practical examples, you should now be able to start using Slurm on your own. Don't forget about the manual pages and the help option to learn more about what is available to you.